Okay, so this is laboratory number five. We're looking at blood pressure and the acute response. So the first thing we're going to look at is just a simple graph of pressure over time. We're going to see how the pressure changes based on each ventricular contraction uh, over time. So you can see that each arrow represents a ventricular contraction. And when that occurs, we get a spike in blood pressure, uh, which gradually comes down and then another ventricular contraction will occur where we get another spike and this cycle continues. So if your heart rate is 60 beats per minute uh, then this would occur uh, once every second. right? So once every second you get a ventricular contraction, uh, the ventricles contract, blood is pushed out which causes an increase in the pressure uh, and then that pressure will gradually come down. Uh, and so the difference between these two uh, the top point is your systolic blood pressure and the bottom point is your diastolic blood pressure. And normal values for a, a young healthy male for systolic blood pressure is 120 and for diastolic blood pressure is 80. Okay. And so the difference between those two is considered pulse pressure. So it's just your systolic blood pressure uh, minus your diastolic blood pressure. Uh, and that's your pulse pressure. So for our healthy young male, it's going to be 120 minus 80, which would be 40. So your pulse pressure would be 40. Uh, so it's a fairly simple calculation, uh, just doing some quick subtraction. Uh, and then another thing that you can calculate is the mean arterial pressure. This one's a little bit different, a little bit more complicated, but again, not too bad. So it's just a time-based average of the pressure. So you can see, uh, based in rest, that diastole lasts longer than systole, right? So at rest, these values show that diastole lasts 0.5 seconds and systole lasts 0.3 seconds. All right, so we can definitely see that there's a difference in time at rest. Uh, and so since there's a difference in time of these different stages at rest, uh, we have to put that into our calculation. So the way we do that is we take, we take pulse pressure and we divide it by three and then we add our diastolic blood pressure. And that's how we get our mean arterial pressure. All right, some of you guys might think, uh, or a simple question might be, you know, why don't we just take the average of your systolic and your diastolic? Well, it's because there's a difference in time between diastole and systole that we have to account for. So instead we do pulse pressure divided by three plus your diastolic blood pressure. And that, that's going to be your mean arterial pressure, or MAP. Now during exercise, especially when your heart rate gets very high, maybe around you know 200 beats per minute near your max, diastole is going to be very short, right? 200 beats per minute, there's very little time for diastole or for, or for your heart to rest and to fill up. So it's going to fill up with blood very quickly and then it's going to have another contraction, which is systole, right? So during exercise, the time of each step changes dramatically. And now systole is actually longer than diastole. All right, so the time courses for each, each of those is actually kind of similar during exercise. You can see there's, there's a minor difference, you know, 0.2 seconds for systole, 0.13 seconds for diastole. Again, these are dependent on how intense the exercise is and it depends on the subject. This is just one example. But to get a better measure of mean arterial pressure at exercise, you take the pulse pressure and you divide it by two and then add your diastolic blood pressure. So the take home message is that your mean arterial pressure is going to be different between rest and exercise and the equation is different where uh, MAP at rest is pulse pressure divided by 3 plus diastolic blood pressure and then at exercise MAP is uh, pulse pressure divided by 2 plus your diastolic blood pressure. So you have to know those differences uh, when you actually do your calculations for your lab report. Uh, you're going to have to know which one of those to use between rest and exercise. All right, so when you get your blood pressure measurement, this is the way, this is the main way people get it done. And if you ever had a physical, uh, it's fairly simple. They take a cuff and they put it on your arm, and they increase the pressure of that cuff until it's higher than your systolic blood pressure. Okay, so if your systolic blood pressure is 120, they probably will crank the cuff up to about 160. All right, so if your cuff pressure is that high, it's not going to allow any blood flow uh, through your arm. Right, the cuff pressure is greater than your systolic blood pressure, so it's clamping off and no blood flow is going uh, through your arm. Right. Now, if you think uh, that they're, they're going to 
release the pressure of the cuff and you can think that the pressure of the cuff will be equal to the systolic blood pressure at some point and that's the first cork cough sound. So when your systolic blood pressure is equal to the cuff pressure, that's when some blood will actually be able to get through. Right? We're bringing down the pressure of the cuff and some blood is going to be able to get through. Now it only occurs at the systolic blood pressure point. Okay? So this is when uh, the heart contracts, you have uh, systole, and the blood flows through the arteries, and the pressure gets up to a point where it's high enough where it can actually push through the cuff pressure. All right. So now we're actually able to hear the blood flow through uh, the arteries uh, just about every second. Right. So it'll, it'll kind of sound like a heartbeat. Right. If you have the stethoscope right there on the on the artery, uh, you can hear every time the heart beats, you'll hear a sound, and that's because the pressure from uh, systole is great enough to get past the pressure of the cuff. Now that continues as the pressure of the cuff is released until the second cork cough sound and that's when you hear the last sound. Uh, after that you won't be able to distinguish any points. Right? And we said the only reason why blood was able to get through was because the pressure was greater than the pressure of the cuff. Well now we're at a point where our blood pressure is greater than the cuff pressure at all times. And if the pressure is greater than the cuff pressure at all times, you won't be able to distinguish any noises, right? You'll just, the blood will flow through freely and you won't be able to distinguish any sounds. The only reason why we can hear a sound that sounds like a heartbeat is because the systolic blood pressure uh, is great enough and the, the, the blood will flow through. But then the pressure on the cuff is great enough that it will stop letting blood flow and it's kind of like having an echo, right? The, the flow of blood induces an echo and that's what we hear with the stethoscope. Now at the second cough sound, we're at a point where the blood is flowing through freely and we won't be able to distinguish any sounds. Uh, so the last sound you hear is the second cough sound and that's your diastolic blood pressure. Okay, so you can use those two sounds to figure out what the systolic blood pressure is and the diastolic blood pressure is. And so finally, the, the cuff is released all the way, and you won't be able to distinguish any sounds. Uh, and that's how you measure blood pressure. Now, a couple of acute responses uh, will be discussed here, one of which is the orthostatic hypotension. And that's just a funny and long term for a sudden drop in blood pressure going from lying down to standing. So some of you might have experienced this before. If you're lying down and you quickly stand up, you might feel lightheaded. And that's because when you're lying down, your blood will pool uh, in different parts of your body. And when you quickly stand up, you don't have much blood uh, near the top of your body. Okay, so you'll feel you might feel lightheaded, especially uh, older individuals will experience this. But another thing is you won't have as much blood near your heart. Now, if your heart doesn't have as much blood, uh, then it won't have it won't develop as much pressure, right? If there's less blood, there's less blood to be pumped, and there's going to be less pressure. So your blood pressure is going to decrease a little bit. Uh, this is very transient. It only takes a couple of seconds. So at first your blood pressure will drop because there's not much blood in your heart. But the blood's just in your limbs and it will come back to your heart fairly quickly. So your blood pressure will dip and then it will come back to normal. And it's just a shift in the body fluids. So again, quickly going from lying down to standing up, you might experience this orthostatic hypotension. Uh, another acute response you might experience, especially in this lab, we can uh, get on the bicycles and we can test this, uh, is blood pressure and exercise. So during exercise, your systolic blood pressure will increase linearly. Um, and this is a linear relationship between how much work you're doing. Okay, so your systolic blood pressure will increase linearly uh, right along with how much work you're doing. Now, the diastolic blood pressure will change very little. So there's something you can test, you can get on the bike and you can see how systolic blood pressure increases uh, and hopefully your diastolic blood pressure, blood pressure doesn't change uh, very much at all. Uh, and again, this is an acute response. Your blood pressure will decrease uh, after exercise. How long it takes to come back down depends on the intensity of the exercise. Uh, it says five to eight minutes after moderate exercise. Uh, of course, if you exercise for a longer or if you exercise for an intense bout, uh, of exercise, then the time it takes to get back down to normal is going to be longer, right? And if you exercise uh, at a very light resistance, then it's going to take a, uh, a smaller amount of time to get back to a normal blood pressure.